Hello and uh, welcome to uh, another uh, Catholic Concern for Animals conversation uh, and today we are very pleased to have uh, John Drennan from Catholic Concern for Animals Australia um, who has been uh, a part of our organisation um, for um, a considerable time John, is that not the case? Yeah well 50 years because mm. I, uh, I was uh, appointed as the chairman at the beginning uh, well, the, the, the very first meeting was on the, uh, I wrote this down to uh, <coughs> make sure, the 18th of uh, May, 1971. And uh, uh, it was our actual first uh, more formal meeting that they it chose me to be the uh, chairman. Well, the first one was president, but then for some reason they changed the word to chairman. And mm -hmm. I chaired every meeting without exception during all those 50 years. So uh, throughout um, the lifetime of Catholic Concern for Animals Australia, you've, you've been there involved in yes. it and chairing the meetings. Yes, I've chaired all the meetings and uh, they were quite tumultuous in the early days, different people having different ideas about what we should do, uh, but that was all right. And uh, yes, I, I, I've been uh, involved throughout I first, uh, but I was always concerned about uh, cruelty to animals and uh, the apparent lack of, uh, of uh, the church and Catholic teaching so on to, uh, uh, to address this, uh, this matter. Uh, from the time I was quite uh, young and uh, uh, what was I going to say? It was only in 1965 when I was in England. Uh, I spent 10 years from 59 to 69 in England, Europe, and uh, Saudi Arabia for some years. And it was in 65, I went for a few days to the Carmelite uh, place in, uh, where is it? Aylesford, was it? Uh, Aylesford. And I found a copy of the Ark. And, uh, one thing followed, I got in touch with uh, uh, May Bocking and uh, was Mrs. Satcher, I think her name was, and uh, other people, and I uh, went and saw Father uh, uh, Wrighton at uh, uh, Basildon, was it, near Reading? I was living in Reading mm -hmm. uh, for three years, I met him there. And uh, when I came back to Australia in 69, uh, a year or two after, Marion Craig, who unknown to me, was a member of the uh, English Art, got in touch with me. May Bocking would have put us in touch, and she had this idea, Marion, of uh, uh, founding a, a branch, as it were, in Australia. And uh, it followed from that. Marion Craig was a, a very active lady. She would have been 64 years of age at that time, the middle one of three sisters, quite uh, unusual uh, three sisters who lived together, they never married, they were uh, rather well off uh, people and uh, uh, yes, they, uh, they, they ask their, their home in Kew uh, became uh, what they called the Ark Centre and uh, they were they reminded me of what must have been like a uh, well, rather conservative sort of uh, Edwardian household, yeah, quite remarkable. And uh, Marion was very active in uh, organising events. We had for some years, uh, every year, we had a very elaborate, uh, uh, very elaborate uh, blessing of the animals at uh, the uh, Capuchin Church in, in Melbourne, in uh, Hawthorne. And uh, we, we always had a visiting uh, speaker. Well, the, 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 the priest there, our first chaplain, Father Luciano Rocchi, he was the main celebrant. And we always had a visiting uh, preacher, a homilist from uh, a, a different religion, whether Anglican or uh, Presbyterian and we had Greek Orthodox and so on. Uh, and in addition, yeah, we, we, well, when we always had the Salvation Army used to come to provide music 
It was quite a, quite an elaborate blessing. So, so that's the sort of thing that Marian liked to do. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the three, uh, I say three aspects with that ceremonial uh, aspect, the, uh, uh, the theoretical, the, the actual study, which is, is my main interest in animal mm -hmm. theology, of course. Uh, and uh, the third thing was uh, uh, outreach, uh, political activity, you know, con uh, talking with, uh, uh, with the politicians and so on uh, to uh, bring about uh, reform. Marion was very much into the royal issue then in the 70s and uh, ban the, uh, banning the uh, gin trap, you know, the rabbit trap. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we had uh, we had quite a bit of uh, uh, help from uh, political people. Interestingly, the, they were. Uh, I think we had more uh, more uh, uh, more help from the more conservative side mm -hmm. than the than the other. The, the, the Liberal Party in Australia is the. Uh, corresponds to your conservative party roughly mm -hmm. speaking and uh, the, the other side of politics is the labor party similar and uh, uh, not so much uh, 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 middle party now there's the greens now and uh, there was the australian democrats i was involved yeah. with the australian democrats for a while anyway uh, where was i Yes, well, I, I was just going to ask, John, I mean, you must have seen enormous changes over that period of, of time. Um, what yes. kind of changes have you seen in terms of the 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 themes? The, I mean, you mentioned, you know, Save the Whales and um, the rabbit traps in, in the early days. How has, how has that developed? What kind of themes have been the, the, the things that Australia's CCA have been concerned about? Uh, yes, well, uh, as you know, there's been the... Uh, uh, it changed the international uh, legislation on uh, the uh, on the whaling, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to say whether we <laughs> had much influence on that. But uh, you you never know. It, 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 every little helps, I suppose. Absolutely. And, uh, the rabbit trap business is uh, the rabbit trap business uh, matter. Uh, they've uh, uh, they haven't uh, cut out everything, but the, the, there are various. Uh, laws about what can be done where and when and this more humane type of uh, or less inhumane type of uh, the traps and so on that are used uh, but uh, yes well there is greater public uh, awareness of uh, of, uh, of the need for uh, uh, humane treatment of animals and it's very difficult to say whether we uh, whether our society has had much influence in that direction you just have to do what you can without worrying too much about whether you whether whether it's us or others that have been the main influences so yeah uh, there's all sorts of things there. It's a vegetarianism and veganism. I've been a vegan for 40 years or something, and a lacto vegetarian before that. Uh, yeah, that's why I, I think that's why I keep very good health at the age of almost 87 now. Uh, but that's not the main reason, which of course is the, the, the main reason. But and 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 the uh, also environmental reason. Mm -hmm. But uh, my greater interest is uh, internal trying to reform the uh, uh, Catholic education and uh, uh, the training of, of, of priests and uh, the training of Catholic uh, teachers in Catholic schools and. Uh, uh, what I was going to say is uh, there are three main uh, uh, aspects of attitude to animal welfare that uh, detract, I think, from the, the best uh, 
uh, one of the best uh, bases bases of uh, of, uh, of our treatment of, of, of animals. And the first is uh, the uh, tendency for uh, those favouring animal welfare to uh, concentrate on the uh, utilitarian or instrumental uh, value of being kind to animals. Uh, I mean, they, they see animal uh, treating animals well as not for the sake of the animals themselves, but as a kind of uh, form of education, which uh, convinces, uh, which uh, trains people, as it were, to be kind to their fellow human being. Mm -hmm. uh, that can be called, sometimes called instrumental, but ism. And uh, of course, you know, uh, that's uh, associated with uh, with uh, well, part of what uh, St. Thomas uh, uh, wrote in the 13th century. And uh, uh, but that's a very good thing in itself. It does form such an educational function. So we're, we're not against that at all. We're very much in favor of that. But uh, we should come to realize that it is for the sake of the animal itself, the same as uh, if I treat you well, <laughs> it's for your sake, not for the sake of, uh, of, of, of someone else or, uh, mm -hmm. or for the sake of uh, some sort of disembodied principle. It's, it's, it's for you. Uh, I think uh, Richard Ryder has got the idea right, generally speaking. Uh, avoidance of, of pain. Pain is not just uh, physical pain, but there's spiritual pain, all sorts of different uh, kinds of pain. Anyway, that's the first thing. Uh, we need to go beyond instrumentalism. The second uh, thing is, I, and I note this has been uh, coming out in some articles in the ARC uh, recently, but uh, you, you need to distinguish three different uh, aspects of uh, the broad idea of, of, uh, of, of environmentalism. Uh, the, the first is the uh, well, human-centered idea of anthropocentric uh, mm -hmm. environmentalism. We, we treat the environment in a way that is sustainable in the, in the sense that uh, uh, we benefit from, from the, uh, the environment and we don't want to uh, run out of it, putting it uh, bluntly. So we, we need to sustain it. The, the, the second aspect is uh, well, the ecology, the ecology of the whole world, the universe, I suppose, and, and the uh, local ecology. Uh, but uh, see, that doesn't, uh, in a very broad sense, I suppose that could uh, could cover uh, the uh, needs of, of animals. But as it's generally thought of, not necessarily so, because we need to be kind to things like tame toads and other the pest animals. Uh, they have hmm. sentience the same as uh, as uh, kangaroos or the uh, koalas and so on. And so that's the uh, shortcoming of uh, of the second one. And the third the third aspect is animals themselves and the, the rights of animals. I, I I don't see any other word in the English language that could replace rights. It doesn't mean we are according we want to accord human rights to all animals. This is, this goes back to uh, uh, education, how people uh, 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 learn at, at school or university or seminary, whatever. Uh, there's a need to, for example, rights has a, a number of uh, different meanings. It can refer to uh, to the uh, 
more abstract sense or it could refer to the uh, actual things like uh, air or water or uh, uh, freedom to run around or whatever. Uh, so we have to distinguish those uh, uh, reference of the word uh, rights. And, you know, in education, uh, children or young people are uh, taught a certain amount about uh, uh, reasoning, uh, deduction, induction, and so on. But there's insufficient uh, education and awareness of meanings of words. So uh, that's what we call polysemy, uh, the fact that a word can have a number of uh, different meanings. Mm. And taking the word, for example, uh, uh, reason, and logic, uh, those things. Uh, when you say something is uh, uh, logical, I'm thinking of the adjective, well, it can have at least two different meanings. One is uh, uh, one is the uh, uh, what I call the descript descriptive or uh, referential meaning, and the other is the evaluative. Now, reason is only one part of our mind, or one aspect, or whatever you like to call it. Uh, and we should not uh, think of uh, uh, the reason as being the only, uh, only or most important part of our mind. Uh, there are so many aspects, in, obviously, the sensation, perception, uh, feelings, emotions, and so on. John, uh, can, can I just ask about those three aspects that you were talking about? Um, mm. Obviously, um, the, the current Pope, Pope Francis, has, mm. um, you know, I mean, with Laudato C in particular, has mm. um, taken an approach to this, which is very different to um, the kind of um, uh, traditional approach of the church. How has mm. that changed your ability to um, inform, to educate, to get the message across in Australia? Uh, yes, well, of course, it, uh, it, 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 it helps. Uh, of, of, of course it helped, but he didn't really go far enough with the third aspect. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I was going to get on to, uh, the, the, those three aspects of broader environmentalism, but, but the three things, the three problems, were the third one I was going to mention is uh, and uh, is what the uh, philosophers refer to as the divine, uh, uh, divine command theory, uh, as you would know. Uh, and this is often the, the criticism of, uh, of uh, religion and religious ethics made by uh, uh, people like uh, Peter Singer and uh, others who were in the non-atheistic or, or, or similarly uh, uh, a basis uh, of, of, of ethics. Uh, mm -hmm. which, uh, I often go, refer to uh, Plato's idea in uh, what was it, the uh, Euthyphro, wasn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. A dialogue called the Euthyphro, in which he says, summing it up, it is not the case that uh, certain actions are right or wrong because the gods say so. It's the other way about that the gods or some of them <laughs> uh, would uh, uh, make certain uh, demands or thought to make certain demands because the, those actions are for intrinsic reasons uh, uh, right or wrong. You know, somewhere in between. <laughs> uh, uh, now, so often uh, this goes <laughs> I wanted to refer to the attitude in, uh, where, where is it, uh, uh, in uh, the book God's Animals, did you? Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, rather ages, 1970, first edition, and uh, the foreword by uh, Archbishop uh, Heenan, the Cardinal Archbishop of Westminster, he said, uh, uh, of course, uh, the animals have no, it's said that animals have no rights. This, of course, is true 
only in one sense. They are not human persons and therefore they have no rights, so to speak, in their own right. But they have very positive rights because they are God's creatures. Uh, if we have to speak with absolute certainty, we, uh, accuracy, we must say that God has the right to have all his creatures treated with proper respect. Now that's what uh, uh, is, is the problem. And, and so often the Catholic priests and uh, other Catholics, if they are uh, uh, keen on uh, uh, keen on animal welfare and uh, opposition to cruelty and all that, they will think like that. And that's mm -hmm. what we call the, 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 and we have to go beyond that. However, it could be argued that uh, Plato was uh, talking about the, the pagan gods. That what you see in the Old Testament, I think, and you see it in other parts of the world also, is a development of the idea of God. God, uh, it uh, develops, you could say it evolves. That's not quite the word, but it develops. And uh, eventually, the, the people approached, well, in the Old Testament, you find a movement towards uh, a conception of God, which corresponded more to Plato's uh, form of the good or idea of the good. So in that sense, we could, I think, say that, that, uh, that it, is, uh, it is because God says so, because uh, God is a kind of the ultimate ground of our being. Uh, two of you said that. Anyway, uh, there is this uh, idea of God that had developed, which would be consistent with divine, uh, divine, uh, uh, divine command. But you see the psychology of this. When you talk to Catholics, they often uh, say, well, how do we know that it's wrong to be cruel to animals? And they're looking for something that's written down. They have to look up whether it be a, a definitive uh, teaching of, 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 of the popes or councils or whatever, or something in scripture, as if they have to have that. Now, that's what I'm trying to uh, convince uh, the, the powers that be to come to realize that they must have a more uh, direct sense of empathy with sentient beings. Now that's what God wants us to do, mm -hmm. not necessarily to, uh, not only to look up scripture. Anyway, uh, uh, I won't go on with that, but that's <laughs> one of the things that uh, I especially have been uh, trying to uh, to put forward. One, one of the terms which is often associated with um, our relationship with the natural world is the mm. idea of is the idea of dominion. Um, yes. Do you think that has value? I mean, uh, what should be? Do you think our relationship with sentient animals and indeed animal creation generally? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very difficult one to answer. Uh, in uh, uh, This is what you get in uh, Genesis. Uh, uh, and that's uh, uh, and the idea, and you, you, you still get this in uh, uh, Arabic. You know, I, I studied Arabic and lived for some years among uh, Middle Eastern people, and there is this idea of uh, dominion and uh, companionship as being somehow the same thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, no, no, not quite the same thing, but they're very closely uh, related. And uh, I, uh, <clears throat> it, it's a very difficult uh, balance uh, to, to, to maintain, I think, uh, uh, we have to try and conserve uh, conserve uh, 
uh, nature, and uh, at the same time we uh, uh, well, I, I I don't think we can we can uh, interfere with uh, nature. We don't uh, stop carnivorous animals from <laughs> eating uh, eating uh, uh, other animals and so on. Uh, uh, you have to be aware of, of, of both uh, of both uh, goals there. Uh, because that was another thing. Is uh, who was it? Uh, Lynn White, you, you know, the uh, American uh, uh, writer who who uh, who uh, uh, blamed Christianity. For being uh, being uh, one of the main causes, or the main cause of uh, what he calls the ecologic crisis. Well, that's a few decades ago, and uh, of course that's an exaggeration. And incidentally, he he was a practicing Christian himself. I don't know his father was a, I think a, a Presbyterian a professor of, of theology somewhere in America, something like that, and uh, he was a Christian. But he was uh, criticizing the uh, church. They're more, uh, they've been uh, more interested in uh, the next world than this, putting it uh, bluntly. So that's another move that's happened in the, in the, the, the young church people here. Now they've uh, come to have a greater interest in uh, like social justice and uh, to some extent. Uh, well, of course, uh, environmentalism and uh, ecology, and uh, to some small extent, a real concern for sentient animals as such, uh, rather than somehow uh, concentrating solely on the, the next life, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so that 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 has been a big uh, move in the in in the, in the church, but. Uh, I think we need to go back. Uh, I, I found uh, often the Anglicans are, are, are better at this than uh, than, uh, than the Catholics, Roman Catholics. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, can I ask John? I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I think that's a, you know what what you're saying is is interesting about um, our focus on on this life. Um, or the next life, but I mean, there, there are things, uh, events going on in Australia. Um, the mm. the environmental catastrophes that that have been mm. suffered over mm. there. Um, the the kind of um, uh, well, you know, I mean, more mundanely, if you like, the the trade agreement with with um, Britain and the 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 issue of um, differing welfare standards. I mean, do, mm. are those kind of things actually focusing people on? Um, the the real events, the 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 issue of sustainability and our uh, oh, relationship with the environment. Oh yes, yes, I think uh, I think very much so. But uh, uh, there's different uh, different ideas about uh, what's uh, causing uh, causing this. Of course, there's been a lot of uh, uh, concern for this, and it's uh, it's now. Uh, much more entering the, the well, more conservative, uh, 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 more conservative people, politicians, and others becoming much more aware of, uh, of uh, environmental uh, degradation and, uh, of course, the, uh, the great bushfires and the millions of animals uh, uh, being uh, killed and. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, suffering uh, mm -hmm. a lot of pain, but uh, uh, they're more interested in the uh, people are more interested in the uh, uh, environment uh, as such, rather than uh, rather than the, uh, the feelings of the individual animals. And that's good, of course, that they that they do something. Uh, uh, about uh, conserving the forests, of course, and uh, and uh, doing something to prevent out outbreak of uh, the, the, the fires. 
Yeah, they're very much concerned. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it, it is, of course, uh, the, the very widespread concern among people when they uh, learned of the terrible conditions of slaughter in, uh, in uh, elsewhere. Uh, interestingly, uh, I know you people are into uh, interfaith dialogue, and that's also another big concern of mine I've been involved with. It's interesting, historically, Marion Craig used to, uh, foundress, as she uh, always liked to be called, she used to point out that, uh, in her opinion, the beginnings of ecumenism, or at least interfaith dialogue, in Australia, in Victoria anyway, was uh, back in the 1950s with uh, meetings that were held to push for a more humane methods of slaughter in the abattoirs. And uh, one of the uh, leading members of that was an Anglican uh, priest and minister, they would have called himself then, uh, who happened to be the father of uh, Peter Elliot, who later crossed the Tiber, you know, who joined, the, joined us, and uh, he became a priest, and then he became a bishop. I think he's retired now. He was assistant bishop uh, here uh, in one area of Melbourne, Bishop P Peter Elliot, uh, rather... Uh, well, I might say to regard as a, a conservative kind of uh, kind of uh, bishop. Mm -hmm. It was interesting that uh, uh, a meeting a few years ago uh, organised by someone who joined us and who now lives in uh, Czech, uh, the, the Czech Republic in Prague, and uh, through her I met. Uh, uh, another former, former retired bishop who became our chaplain, and that's Bishop Hilton Deacon. And uh, it's hard to imagine two bishops with more differing uh, attitudes to, to things where there's latitude for such difference. And I remember them at this meeting, we were sitting together at the front of the meeting. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so there we are now. Mm. <laughs> I, I just wondering, uh, Chris, Chris, is there anything that you want to um, comment on at this stage in terms of, of what we've been talking about with John? Yeah, yes, yes, thanks, thanks, John. Well, first thing I want to do is, is um, congratulate John and, and all his colleagues for 50 years. Absolutely. Anniversary. That's the first thing I want to do. Uh, as I say, the wonderful work that's been going on in Australia for over half a century now. I think that's the first thing I want to say is, is thanks, John, uh, for all the work that you and your colleagues have been doing in Australia, uh, which is literally the other side of the world from where I'm sat now. Uh, so that's the first important thing I want to say. I, I was very also uh, interested in the discussions around Dominion uh, and, and also about animal rights that you and, you and uh, John were having, Gerald. Mm -hmm. And um, also, more latterly, and I want to make a few comments here about the Australia trade deal you referred to with the United Kingdom, that very recent. Of course, what, what we need never to forget is the existing trade with the European Union from Australia in kangaroos. Kangaroos meat, the EU is the biggest importer of kangaroo meat in the world, uh, one of the largest importers of kangaroo skins in the world. And we should never forget that 1.6 million kangaroos are slaughtered every year for commercial purposes. Mm. Now, the kangaroo is an iconic animal, not mm. only in Australia, of course, but around the world. Mm. Indeed. Uh, and we should never forget the horrendous trade in kangaroo meat and skin 
that uh, you know, and here in Europe, we import more than anywhere else. Yeah, and, that, and, and of course, uh, you know, with the current um, uh, emphasis uh, re with regard to the football tournament going on, well, I was with... going to mention that. I was going to mention that. I actually, CCA have actually signed a letter that is going to the president of UEFA, the football uh, organizers, about kangaroo leather football boots that are being used in this tournament. Um, uh, and uh, we're speaking on on the the day that the uh, the, fin the the day after rather the, the last semi final was played, uh, and the yeah. final now is taking place next Sunday, I believe. Now yep. there are there are you know footballers in this tournament yeah. who have been wearing football boots made of kangaroo leather. Now I'd be amazed if most of the general population are aware of that, and that I suspect yeah. most of them would be appalled. If they if they were aware of that, uh, mm. increasingly uh, CCA, along with our colleagues in Euro Group for Animals, are trying to raise this issue about the importation of kangaroo leather and kangaroo skins for very and kangaroo food meats rather for all sorts of uh, issues. It, it, it's, it's a big issue in Europe. Uh, so that want to mention that about the trade, and as you rightly say, in this current football tournament, I suspect that all those people who are watching that football tournament from wherever country they're supporting in Europe, very few of them know that some of their players are wearing football boots made out of kangaroo. Mm. So I raise that issue, I think. Yes, look, I, I, I agree with you, Chris. That's a, that's a, a, a very uh, wrong thing that's, uh, that's being done uh, to uh, you know, kangaroos. But... Uh, uh, it's not uh, so much that they're uh, uh, I iconic uh, or uh, anything like that. Uh, this is something that, that would involve uh, uh, the need for avoiding cruelty to uh, any uh, any uh, sentient uh, being, any animal. Mm -hmm. But yeah, look, I'll, I'll, I'll get on with this. I, I am aware of it and uh, I'll uh, see what we, what little we can do about it. One of the other issues I wanted to mention, uh, John and Gerald, was was on the kangaroo issue in particular. I'm aware that in New South Wales, they just had an inquiry into the uh, mm. issue of kangaroos and, and, and the killing mm. of kangaroos. And that, that was only, I think, last month in, in the New South Wales Parliament. Uh, mm. And as it happens... Again, quite a lot of coincidences around at the moment, if that's the right expression, coincidences. Minding Animals, the very, very big international animal advocacy conference, which is held every three years, was due to be held in Sydney this month. Um, mm. It was in Mexico three years ago. But of course, it had to be had to be cancelled in face to face because of the mm. COVID pandemic. But they're still hoping, I believe, to have some online sessions of Minding Animals 2021 Sydney uh, later this month and clearly CCA will be engaging with that conference online uh, if we can. So, uh, you know, I, I was in, in normal times, I would have been in Australia later this month, John, for that conference. <laughs> uh, it would have been a great thing to have been there on, on, on the 50th anniversary, but obviously COVID has, COVID has put an end to that uh, that but hopefully the conference will take place in some form later this month. Mm. I'll, I'll uh, get on to that and uh, see what uh, what we can contribute to it. With respect to the kind of changes we've been making in CCA, John, I mean, uh, I believe you were you were part of our fish and welfare. Um, uh, marine welfare conference, weren't you? Um, you came along to that in. in virtual in the virtual world uh well sorry when was this oh this is a few months ago now jack, jack the conference in january we had online john yes yes uh, i i don't think i was uh, actually involved with that oh maybe i'm maybe i mis mistook that bit. Uh, um uh, how yeah. are you finding the 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 um i mean has the digital um delivery of the arc and uh you know our newsletters has that improved communications uh, for you in australia uh well people 
uh, used to uh, like to like to get in the uh, the uh, printed versions, and uh, <laughs> they, they they miss that. Uh, but uh, uh, yes, they, 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 it's uh, unfortunate that you had to uh, discontinue the printed uh, version. I think. How, how do you see things going from here on in Australia with CCA? Well, of course, this is the problem. Our members are all over the place, mm -hmm. uh, and there's not many here in, in, in Melbourne uh, that, that are uh, uh, that people that are interested and do things in their own uh, in their own uh, uh, area, I mean, both in, in their physical locality and in the particular area that they're interested in, uh, whether it be uh, uh, cats and dogs or the native or fauna or whatever. And that, uh, that goes back to, uh, <clears throat> I think it was the advice of uh, one of the uh, bishops in uh, one of the president bishops in, in England that uh, uh, we that the, 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 the study circle for animal welfare as it then was and should uh, encourage its members to uh, be involved with uh, uh, other uh, societies that deal with specific uh, issues mm -hmm. rather than the CCW itself uh, directly uh, dealing with uh, with those matters. Of course, it, it should do that in, as far as it can, but uh, it's perhaps more important for for the members to to uh, involve themselves either personally or uh, directly or with uh, other societies, whether it be the RSPCA or the the, the, the Pet Protection Society or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's the, the way to go. I, I, I see the uh, CCA Australia as uh, a sort of uh, hub, hub for uh, uh, such people, such activists to uh, gain inspiration and uh, uh, theological uh, underpinning, as it were. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, that, so CCA is acting as a as a way for which people can um, uh, consider their actual activity in in um, uh, in other groups. Yes, yes. Well, we we get uh, uh, inquiries from people and. Uh, and not only Catholics, I find Anglicans tend to be <laughs> good, but more than more than say uh, Uniting Church or uh, whatever, uh, they tend to be more animal aware. But uh, they can sometimes inquire to us about uh, about uh, the well, theological uh, mm -hmm. relevance. Of, and, of, what of what they're doing. And are there specific issues in, in your locality around Melbourne which um, which you've been involved in? Uh, no, most of the uh, most of the issues are either uh, uh, elsewhere uh, you know, in Queensland or wherever rather than uh, rather than uh, local uh, matters. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's the, 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 the terrible bushfires and uh, the problems that uh, they raised uh, recently, uh, last year anyway. Uh, but uh, uh, yes, I mean we don't we don't have the uh, the, the uh, ability or facility to uh, do all that much. How do you feel? I mean, you've been uh, a member of CCA for fifty years. Uh, yeah. How do you feel that your um, approach, your view, has, has been um, impacted by CCA? 
how, how, what? Has CCA changed the way you see? Oh, uh, the... CCA in England, your English uh, CCA. Well, I mean, in as Australia as well. Me. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Well, in mm. Australia as well. I mean, you know, I, I mean, yeah. being part of the organisation down there. Uh, yes. Well, um, uh, uh, obviously, I've, I've I've learned a lot from uh, from reading the Ark magazine all the time and uh, other uh, other uh, literature. Uh, uh, obviously, that's. Uh, Influenced uh, me personally a, a great deal, and I learned a lot mm -hmm. from it. Yes, so uh, yes, John. It, it, I, I mean, thank you very much for being part of this. Is there anything that you want to to, to discuss with respect to the the last fifty years, with respect to your involvement in in these issues, um, which we haven't touched on? Uh, yeah, we've touched on a lot. I, I was going to perhaps say something about the uh, actual history of, uh, of yeah. our uh, so but uh, no, there isn't a, a time, I, I guess, for for that. But uh, uh, Marion Craig was, uh, as I say, very active, and uh, uh, from when we started in 1971 until. Uh, well, she lived from, from the nine, she was born in 1907, died in 2007, uh, so she was almost 100. She sounds and, like uh, a remarkable woman. Yes, the, and her eldest sister also had a long life, and her youngest sister from 1914 uh, had a fairly long life too. Mm -hmm. They were all, all involved and... Uh, they did uh, much more than I've, uh, I've ever done. Of course, that was more or less Marion's main uh, main uh, occupation, as it were. So, uh, uh, so it's understandable how she could do do much. But there's there's always been a, a certain attitude among the, the press reporters and uh, among the, the, the clergy. That, that we, uh, that Mary and, and the rest of us uh, were, uh, were like uh, rather sentimental little old persons <laughs> uh, with, their, uh, with their dog and so on, or cat, uh, rather than being people who are concerned about these uh, wider issues of the, of the, of the sort mm -hmm. of Kangaroos and uh, the whole uh, natural uh, sentient environment, and uh, the tendency not to take us sufficiently uh, uh, seriously. However, at least the uh, people with political influence uh, uh, have, uh, I think, taken us uh, seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was thinking of Mr. Jonah, who is a he was a great help in the royal issue <laughs> uh, that back in the uh, early 70s, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I haven't been able to do anything uh, uh, as, as, as uh, active as the, uh, as the uh, as Marion Craig was able, able to do. But uh, I, I tend to have uh, concentrated especially on the matter of uh, education. And uh, sometimes I will go to uh, schools if invited to speak to the uh, senior pupils at the, uh, at the uh, schools on matters of uh, animal welfare. Yeah, yeah, young people are, are very aware these days, I think. Mm -hmm. That is environmental, and uh, sometimes I think they understand what we're saying better than older people. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly, think? I mean, that, 
that's been, a, I think, a case globally where young people have become attracted to these issues and engaged with them. But, I mean, we, we are extremely grateful and, and delighted that you have been around in Australia um, since the inception and to, to be there to carry the flag for us. So, so, so thank you for that, John. Yes, and I, I'm, I'm very appreciative of the excellent example uh, given by you people in uh, in uh, England, example and uh, actual uh, research and advice and so on. Mm. Well, we certainly want you know more more people to join around uh, the world and engage with the issues and. And, and get involved in, in um, the discussion, as, as you indeed have, and um, educate others about the issues and, uh, and what, uh, what we, what we um, focus on. Mm. It is one thing I'd say, it's often uh, quite uh, depressing that we don't get as far as we uh, want, but, uh, especially with the uh, reforming uh, uh, politically, uh, but uh, and I, I sometimes wonder whether we, uh, we're, we're re really ha having much effect at all, but I think even the fact that we exist uh, in Australia, uh, or similarly with you of course, but the fact that we exist and are to some extent known, that itself serves a purpose I mean, it shows Catholic people that uh, that uh, animal welfare is uh, on the agenda, as it were. Absolutely. Even if we, uh, even if we don't, uh, even if we're not all that effective in persuading the uh, the politicians mm. and uh, others to uh, to what they sometimes promise to do, but <laughs> they usually have some excuse for not uh, doing uh, doing what they uh, said they would do. And I can understand it's a, it's a difficult uh, mm. uh, thing being, uh, being a, a, a politician and you, you just can't uh, do most of the things you want to do. I think you're right, John. I, I think our very presence in, in Australia, mm. here in Britain, in the USA, in other places, actually does um, uh, show um, the Catholic community and beyond the Catholic community that there are um, uh, ways of engaging with these issues which are uh, in line with um, faith and, and, and with belief. Mm. Chris, is there anything that you want to add at this stage? Uh yeah, just very briefly to once again say what I said earlier to, to thank John and his colleagues for 50 years of fantastic work, but also to look forward to the next 50 years uh, and uh, 50 more years of, of CCA in Australia and, and also in other parts of, of the world. And just to reminisce about, I think John said that in the 60s is when he first came aware of the ARC and CCA. And in those days, of course, he mentioned vegetarianism and veganism. Vegetarianism was looked upon as a rather strange thing in the 60s. Yeah. I remember it was Ryder telling me that many times. And of course, now there are over half a billion vegetarians on the planet. Over half a billion people are vegetarian now. And maybe in 50 years, there'll be half a billion vegans as well. Who, who knows? Uh, and also, looking forward to that 50 years, and... Um, and it may be, it may be, John, that the three of us aren't around in 50 years, but uh, it may be, hopefully, that those 1.6 million kangaroos are not being commercially slaughtered anymore. Mm. Uh, mm. And footballers mm. don't go around in their multi-million pound uh, paid jobs using kangaroo leather to kick a football mm. around. So let's hope mm. that those positive changes are made. And in 50 years' time, our successes don't have to try and campaign to stop all those kangaroos being commercially slaughtered. 1.6 million of an iconic uh, mm. Australian animal being slaughtered so people can wear it or eat it. Absolutely appalling, but hopefully in 50 years that may be changed. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, John. 
um, I, it's been great talking to you. And um, uh, I, as as Chris said, um, we, we, we're so delighted that 50 years anniversary of uh, Australia CCA and, and of your involvement in it. And um, uh, thank you for all the hard work you've done uh, over there. And um, uh, we'd like to thank you as well, the audience, for watching this um, particular recording, this particular conversation. We hope you've enjoyed um, John's um, talks and, and his uh, uh, interest in, in uh, education within the Catholic community uh, and beyond. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you uh, on the next uh, CCA conversation. Thank you.